Welcome to the Science of Self Healing series. My name is Appaloosa. I am a holistic bioenergetic practitioner and owner of Light Body Energetics. This is part two of the meditation video. If you didn't see part one, you can watch it here or bookmark it to watch it later. We will be discussing the seven states of consciousness. But before we do, if you'd like to get on my email list for free offerings and infrequent emails, you can go to lightbodyenergetics.com. You can also go to my Instagram at lightbodyenergetics and go to the link tree and you'll find information there. We are discussing the science of self-healing and techniques to ignite the healer within. I've been on my own healing journey for the last seven years with two major healing crises and having healed or healing from them both, I am on a quest for knowledge and I'm here to share that knowledge with you. Part two of this video is explaining higher states of consciousness and a Vedic technology that has been studied for 30 years to expand one's consciousness. In all, there are seven different states of consciousness as taught by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi of India, and three of which you experience every day, waking, dreaming, and sleeping. First off, what is a state of consciousness? Consciousness is wakefulness or awareness, and physicists and wis wisdom traditions explain consciousness as a field, a field of consciousness we all have access to. It's a unified field. Deep sleep is considered the least developed state of consciousness, as in this state, there's no awareness of self or the environment. In dreaming, there's illusory awareness of self in an imagined environment. And in waking state of consciousness, there is greater awareness of self and the environment, but it's localized in time and space. We have access to these higher stages of development through transcendental meditation, which expands consciousness into higher and higher states. Maharishi Vedic science acknowledges that brain activity is a necessary aspect of conscious experience but goes beyond this level of reasoning to suggest there's a field of consciousness that interacts with brain functioning to generate the individual experience. Dr. Fred Travis of MIU says, the reason we are conscious is that there is a field of consciousness which is not in the possession of any individual functioning, interacting with physiology, giving rise to consciousness. We have access to this field of consciousness when we transcend into the fourth state of consciousness. Waking is the first state of consciousness and we all attest to being awake now, right? Which brings me to the next two states of consciousness, dreaming and sleeping. Waking, dreaming, and sleeping each have their own physiological correlates, EEG, brainwave patterns, nervous system activity, and metabolic activity. There's a fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh state of consciousness, each with their own physiological markers different from each other with subjectively different experiences as well. Transcendental consciousness or TC provides a deep rest to the nervous system, even deeper than deep sleep, according to Maharishi. It distinguishes itself from other states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and sleeping by alpha one brain coherence and power, lower sympathetic tone, an increased blood flow to the frontal lobe and decreased blood flow to the brainstem and apneustic breathing. How do we access transcendental consciousness? Transcendental meditation is an effortless technique which uses a sound or mantra to transcend the objective world, our body, our ego, thoughts, feelings, abstract thought, fine thought, and arrives at this state of abstract pure consciousness. Alternating between waking and transcendental consciousness, waking and transcendental consciousness, two different states of physiology habituates the nervous system to reduce stress and access deep rest to the nervous system more frequently, which allows transcendental consciousness to evolve into a fifth state of consciousness called cosmic consciousness or CC. Maharishi uses this uh, yellow cloth analogy to visualize this. When you dye a cloth yellow, it takes several applications. So you put the cloth in it in the dye and then you let it steadfast in the sun and then you put it in the dye and let it steadfast in the sun and you do this over and over again until you get a deeper and deeper saturated color of yellow in the cloth. This is why it's encouraged to practice meditation twice a day because it regulates the nervous system to be habituated to this transcendental consciousness, to this field, this unified field of consciousness. When you habituate the state of transcendental consciousness, it becomes permanent in your waking state. CC is a state of duality, experiencing self along with self. The small s self is the individual self or ego self experienced by the senses. 
and the capital S self is the universal self accessed during transcendental meditation and experiences the unified field of consciousness. According to Maharishi, repeated experience of this fourth state expands awareness, purifies and balances the nervous system and establishes the basis for permanent higher states of development. The fourth state of consciousness being transcendental consciousness accessed by transcendental meditation. And this is why people experience less stress and less triggers throughout the day, have the ability to time manage. And this is the subjective experience I have myself for practicing this type of meditation over the last year and a half is a huge reduction in stress, ability to time manage better, and ability to handle triggers and stresses a lot better as well. It also increases cognition and intelligence, but that you can find in video one when I explain more of the why on meditation and specifically transcendental meditation. Cosmic consciousness has its own physiological markers. It is characterized by the maintenance of a blissful state of transcendental consciousness at all times. The fifth state, cosmic consciousness, is described by Maharishi as a natural permanent state of enlightenment that is characterized by inner freedom, fulfillment, and self-realization. At this stage, the fourth state of consciousness has become an all-time experience coexisting with the three ordinary states of sleep, dreaming, and waking. Maharishi says the fourth state of consciousness coexisting with the waking state. We can see this on EEG brainwaves. Alpha-1 brainwaves, the signature brainwave of TM, becomes present in the scans when you regularly practice transcendental consciousness. But in cosmic consciousness, they're present, thus alpha-1 brainwave is present even during waking, dreaming, and sleeping. And the alpha-1 brainwave is signature of the feeling of inner wakefulness. And subjectively, it's reported as witnessing sleep. So you're still getting this deep sleep and rest. You feel rest when you wake up, but there's this inner wakefulness while you're sleeping. Hmm. The sixth state of consciousness is divine consciousness in which the perception is fine tuned to experience the deepest relative. The relative meaning objects that we experience with our senses, the objective world is the relative, and deepest value meaning the divine in all of the objects that we experience with our senses. In divine consciousness, the heart has expanded. One of my professors at MIU said of God consciousness, we do not become like God, but do become aware of the finest level of relative, the celestial level, that there is a light of God that we directly experience in all things. Roger Gabriel, Chopra Meditation Center's Chief Meditation Officer, says of divine consciousness, one perceives the universe as a speck of dust and experiences the divine in oneself and in everyone around us. And in unity consciousness, the seventh state of consciousness, the big self is present at all times as an expression of the unified field. The unified field is the absolute, unchanging field, and the relative field is full of diversity, always changing. We can experience the absolute, unchanging field when we transcend. Dr. John Hagelin, professor and author of Foundation of Physics and Consciousness at MIU, defines the experience as the whole objective and subjective universe is experienced as flavors of my own self. In layman terms, in unity consciousness, one experiences no boundaries, no separation between their selves and the external world around them. Roger Gabriel says of the experience in unity consciousness, everyone is part of the universal consciousness. And in my higher states course at MIU, Professor Gear says, everything is experienced in terms of the unbounded self. Boundaries are transparent to their own infinite essence. In my previous video, I discussed several types of meditations, each with their own benefits. Because I have subjective experience with TM and I've been subject to lots of research about transcendental meditation, I am a bit partial to it. However, please choose what works for you. I practiced all types of meditations for a decade before practicing transcendental meditation and I've experienced benefits of them all. But again, practice what works for you and what's calling for you. Use your intuition or try many different types of meditation. But I do recommend doing at least 10 minutes a day, maybe even 
twice a day and maybe you can work your way up to 20 minutes twice a day. If you like this video, please subscribe. Don't forget to watch part one of meditation and watch all the videos in this series to develop your own unique and ideal morning routine.